Thank you all very much, and I am hoping we can take the idea of having a mayor read poetry back to Toronto. <laughs> Can you see Mayor Ford? <laughs> what poem would he choose? <laughs> One by E.E. E. Cummings, maybe. <laughs> Stop the gravy train. <laughs> the gravy train. <laughs> the gravy train. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Um, I shudder to think what the next four years are going to be like, anyway. But poetry, poetry might save the day. I think so. I think it's a great idea. Um, if you can only just breathe and listen to his breath. <laughs> um, thank you, Carol Warren. I was invited last year and couldn't come. My mother passed away and it was just too much. So she persevered and I'm really pleased to be here and particularly given that it has reintroduced me to my dear friends uh, Liz Zetlin and Don Holman. 20 years, well, more than 20 years, our children went to the same daycare center in Toronto, one of the best daycare centers, West End Parents Daycare Center. It was very political. Um, seriously, we actually occupied an immigration office on behalf of um, the parents of one of the children at the daycare, they were about to deport back to Latin America. So we took our politics seriously <laughs> when it came to childcare. And um, Liz and I became friends and Dawn, and then she moved up here and we lost contact. And I really, literally, we haven't really seen each other. In... And she bought a house in the same neighborhood I lived in, Lansdowne, Oakwood, Sinclair. So it's just really great to, to be here. Um, I consider myself a recovering poet, although my condition is terminal. <laughs> um, <laughs> and what I mean by that is, um, Lynn, is it Lynn who introduced me? Lynette. Lynette, sorry. She talked about Zong, and I, I, this, was, this took me about seven to eight years to do, and it was published a couple years ago, and it's, I don't know, it's, I don't know if other people have had this experience, but it, um, it really took the stuffing out of me in a, in a really um, deep way. And it came, it was the coming together. I used to practice law. When I met Liz, I was an article student, and then I became a lawyer. And it's a coming together of that part of my life. I haven't practiced in 20-something years, and poetry. And um, I don't know, anyway. So I'm not sure I'm going to read from that today. Um, but I just wanted to tell you why, because it's just a very difficult subject. I'll just tell you quickly what it's all about. And you can, I didn't bring any copies with me. I have copies of uh, She Tries Her Tongue, which I will read from, definitely. Um, but you can get Zong on uh, Amazon. Um, and it, ha it has to do with uh, an event that happened back in the 18th century, 1781. A ship is coming across the Atlantic, and some of the... Um, cargo, Africans on board, and some of the crew fall ill, and um, insurance law, which is where the connection with me, with my uh, experience as a lawyer, sort of hooks in. Insurance law, you would insure your cargo, of course, and insurance law said that if Africans died um, in, an, in the ordinary course of things, like if, I suppose, if they got sick and died, you couldn't collect. But if there was a mutiny or revolt and they were killed, you could collect. So the captain decides that he would throw overboard um, over 100. He massacred about 150 Africans. And so there is a case uh, because the um, ship's owners tried to collect on the insurance money and the insurance company said no, they wouldn't pay. And um, they took them to court and the court said yes, they had to pay for the people that they had murdered, and uh, the insurance company then appealed it, and they were given a new trial. And then the, the, the trail goes cold after that. We don't know if a trial was ever held, but the people who were fighting against slavery used it to, you know, t as a tool to organize people. And many of the tools we use today, you know, um, petitions and all those kinds of things, postering, 
comes out of that particular struggle. Um, so I took the case and made poems just using the words of the case, and it just exploded into this very, um, very challenging, disturbing work. So what I'm going to start with, though, I just wanted to tell you what the story was so you get a sense of why it's difficult for me sometimes to, to engage with it. I'm going to, a poem I wrote when I was uh, doing um, the writing residence at um, McMaster University. I was asked to um, submit something to their annual um, anthology that they put out. This is called Fall, which I think is appropriate. The year turns, curls around itself. A leaf whose time has come to fall towards earth and itself, its own beginning. And the raccoon whose pelt, whose soft curled pelt mocks the memory of birth is its own tombstone on the wet black road. Um, 